So to get the BSA on the road and legal, I fitted this um, GPS speedo, which is just a digital display. It was dirt cheap off um, eBay. Yeah, it just runs off 12 volts, of course, and uh, picks up the GPS signal quite quickly and gives an accurate display of speed. Um, so, so it's absolutely fine, really. But I've been thinking I would like an analog version rather than this digital one. This isn't waterproof either, which isn't ideal. But although it's been fine for the last 12 months. Uh, so anyway, yeah, so analog speedo was the objective. The official ones, of course, are really expensive now. And a good one is something like 500 pounds or something ridiculous. But um, fair enough if you're going for a concourse factory finish, but I'm not really concerned about that. So I just wanted to, to work and uh, just sort of look generally right. So, so I wasn't in the market for an original one. Also, of course, the original needs the um, the cable drive from the back wheel. I've got the drive on the back wheel, but I certainly haven't got the cable. I'd rather not have the uh, hassle of a cable. Anyway, so, uh, so I've been thinking about this for a long time now. Again, something I've had for a long time also is the correct um, mount for the B50. And I think I assume the B25 as well. Anyway, and the uh, the rubber cup that the original Speedo fits in. So that can go straight onto the fork leg. Um, what I've been missing is a, is a suitable analog speedometer. Well, I came across this one on eBay as well. Chinese, of course. That um, is indeed GPS and comes with a GPS sensor, which plugs into the back. But this looks too small, but I think with a bit of um, jiggery-pokery, I can fit it into this original cup, or at least original style cup, if I can get these wires in. Um, and it won't look too bad if that fits in there. And for a start, it's not wildly smaller than the original. Is it two and a half inch, I think? Um, a few issues are there. One is that it's too long. So I'm going to need to cut out, I think, part of the, uh, the rubber cup, have it poking through. And also, it is indeed too small. You know, the diameter is too small. But I think, again, if I um, 3D print a little adapter that fits into this groove on the original cup and also onto this bezel on this new speedo, then I should be able to make a pretty neat job of that fitting in there. And uh, so maybe paint the back side black and uh, just mount it on the bike and so that look reasonably authentic and um, certainly more sort of period rather than a digital display. Right, so I've cut the bottom out of this rubber cup so that this will now fit through, which is fine. And I've started to uh, print adapters and I think we have rule of three for my, in my world at least. Whenever you try and measure something up, print something, um, 3D print something, then um, you get it wrong twice. And then the third one, with a bit of luck, is correct. Uh, and that's just happened again, despite my best efforts. I measured everything up pretty carefully. Um, and this one, the first one, is pretty close. But what I didn't realize was that although this inner hole fits over the threads absolutely fine, um, it hits this little um, step where the thread ends, um, so it wouldn't actually go up far enough. So I also found that the, the, the bezel, although I'd measured it correctly, um, or accurately with a vernier, um, this doesn't fit over the bezel. This inner hole with this diameter here, um, and this is the same. Anyway. So this is the third attempt of enlarged this thin up time so it does fit over this step and the bezel is the right size. The uh, the other features on this are this out, outer time is here 
the, the thickness of it and the diameter fit into this recess in the rubber cup. So it sort of emulates the um, original speedo bezel, I guess. Anyway, so putting this all together, this fits in here. And so that now goes all the way up. And the bezel fits in. It's this nice snug fit, but it's um, but it does go. Famous last words. There we go. So I guess that effectively is the same diameter as the original um, speedo. This one is clearly slightly smaller, but um, there we go. Right, so that will now fit, I believe, in here. Again, it's a snug fit, but it does go. So, yeah, I think that's pretty good. Certainly fits nice and snugly. So with this ring, which is the original ring, and then on the back, that will hold it securely. So yeah, that's probably not wildly different to the um, the original Speedo. At least it's black on white, and roughly the right size. It's slightly smaller than the original. I'll just take it out again, put this ring on, which just holds the. Um, the speedo into the adapter. I mean, this this um, adapter is I was having to sign it on um, Open SCAD and uh, can put it onto Thingiverse if anybody needs it. But um, well, it's such a unique piece, I can't imagine there's going to be much demand. But yeah, let me know in the comments if you would like a copy of this adapter. Okay, so I'm going to take off this uh, old GPS and uh, fit the new one. Looking at the reference photographs I've got, this, this should be on the left hand fault leg. So I will stick it on there and then we'll try and work out the wiring and get the module in place. Okay, Nipex um, fire wrench. Come to the rescue again. Get this off without damaging it because it doesn't, um, it's got smooth jaws and it doesn't slip on the, on the hexagon. Okay, so that's the bracket that came with the bike and had a Japanese speed on it. But so I said this little GPS one has worked pretty well. Anyway, I will swap it for this one. This is wired up now. So the uh, positive negative come through to this regulator that I installed for the uh, for the smaller of the previous speedo, just a 12 volt regulator, which I don't really need, I don't think, because the voltage range on the new one is uh, something like nine to 30 volts or something. But I know it's there, so I'll use it regardless. Um, the, uh, I wired the yellow wire, which is the backlight, into the power, straight into the black lead. Black lead? No, the red one. Uh, the positive. So the, the LED backlight will be on permanently, which is fine for me. I think. The lead for the button, the settings button, is currently coming back up here so I'm going to fit a button somewhere I haven't decided where yet but that just lets you flip through the uh, the different options on the back line so it's not massively important but um, I'll tuck that away somewhere and the sensor is on a massively long lead so it could go on the back bumper is something I was thinking oh, the back bumper the uh, the back mud guard um, that would be good because it would be flat and horizontal, relatively speaking. But thinking about it, I think certainly in the short term at least, I'm going to put it on this front mudguard instead. 
if I can just put it on there, on that bolt, that should be fine. At least I can check out that it works and uh, maybe leave it there permanently. So yeah, that's the plan so far. So that's the sensor on the front of my car, which I think is going to be fine. Doesn't look too stupid, in my opinion, anyway. Just need to route the cable around now, and uh, I'll put a bit of petroleum jelly on there just to waterproof the connection. An issue. The uh, bolted regulator is obviously cutting in and out. I'm showing two and a half volts, but it looks as if the uh, power for the feeder is kicking on off. It's on now, so it comes to the LED light. There we go. Okay, so that's a bit of a failure. It um, doesn't work basically, I'll keep switching on and off even when I'm riding down the road. So I'm going to reroute the power supply. So at the moment it's going through that regulator, that 12 volt regulator. But also it's on the side of the Boyer power box, which means it only gets power when the voltage has risen above a certain level. Um, I think it's probably the power supply, to be honest, is the culprit, but um, I'll put it on the side of the or the output from the power box that is constantly at 12 volts. Yeah, with the power box, it's designed for batteryless machines. So it um, takes the power from the alternator and directs it only to the ignition to start with until such time as the output from the generator rises above, I think it's about 13 volts, at which time it turns power onto the light output. Uh, and at the moment, this speedo is running off the lights output, so it doesn't turn on immediately. So that could be an issue as well. And it'd be better if it came on as soon as I turn the battery on. So I will move that supply, the positive supply, sorry, the negative supply to, um, I keep forgetting this uh, positive earth bike, the uh, negative supply to the uh, direct output from the power box. So yeah, give that a go, see if that fixes the problem. So I've removed the uh, that 12 volt regulator and the, and just connected the speedo straight to the switched power supply from the battery so I think that should fix things with a bit of luck if I can just get this back on there we go so now if I turn on the power it should just come straight on there we go it goes through a, a startup cycle if you can see on the camera but it's flashing GP there just looking for a GPS signal so hopefully we're back to normal. This voltmeter is still on here. I'll just stick it on an angle um, to 12.1 volts. So yeah, should be all right. I'll give it a try on the road again. Good, so that seems to work. So we'll see how it goes in the medium term. Um, I've just painted the underside of this just with some matte black, just to hide the, the bright white of the, uh, the GPS. So yeah, all good. Thanks for watching.